a study of fluid dynamics would not be complete without looking at the vorticity transport equation. Um, now, I want you to distinguish uh, nomenclature, specifically the difference between the vorticity equation vorticity equation and vorticity transport equation. So what's the difference? The vorticity equation is simply the definition of vorticity and that's omega equal curl u. That's just really the vorticity equation. The vorticity transport equation is a tr legitimate transport equation for omega, d omega by dt plus etc, which we will derive today. Now many will confuse the two, um, even the Wikipedia website um, puts this equation as the vorticity equation. Uh, in my opinion that's um, technically incorrect. Okay, so how do we derive the vorticity transport equation? We are going to consider the general, um, general case, general compressible, compressible fluid flow. Okay, and with this, we will look at the Navier-Stokes equations that we've derived in weak form. So du by dt plus u dot grad u equals to minus 1 over rho grad p plus mu or plus 1 over rho div tau okay this is the tensor um, plus uh, some body forces okay this is rho g um, for example now how do we obtain vorticity we take the curl of this equation. So vorticity transport equation is derived by taking the curl of equation 1. So let's do this one term at a time. Term 1 curl du by dt that gives us d omega by dt. Easy. Term number two, the curl of u dot grad u. Now um, this is going to take some, uh, some additional work and the way we do this is as follows. First we want to express this term using the vector identity that we used when we were deriving the Bernoulli equation if you remember. And with this we say this is the curl of now this term is 1 over 2 nabla u squared, so u dot u, okay, minus, minus u cross curl u, okay, now bear with me for a second here, this guy over here is omega, and now once we take the curl, we will have 1 over 2 curl grad u squared minus curl of u cross omega. Okay. Now this guy here is 0 because the curl of a gradient of a scalar is equal to 0 always. And the intuitive explanation is that grad phi is parallel to nabla and the nabla cross a vector parallel to nabla. Those, are, those two vectors over here are parallel and therefore their cross products um, is zero. So remember vectors a and b, a cross b is equal to zero if and only if a is parallel to b. So that leaves us with this non-zero term only. Okay, so how can we decompose this? There's another nasty identity that um, we can use for this guy and that is, 
So we still have this negative sign over here and then we will have, um, so the curl of u cross omega is equal to minus omega div u. So this should give us a vector, okay? So indeed this is a scalar times a vector okay? plus omega dot grad u, okay? minus u dot grad omega plus u div omega. And see the symmetry between these terms, omega div u and u div omega, omega dot grad u and u dot grad omega, and see how the signs alternate. Okay. Now, in all cases, this term is zero because this is div curl u and the same way that um, the curl grad phi is zero the div of a curl is always zero always okay for the same reasons all right so that leaves us with these three non-zero terms and we will um, multiply with the sign so that gives us omega div u before you jump to conclusions and say div u is zero, this is, remember, a general compressible case. So the, the, there is non-zero dilatation, okay? Minus omega dot grad u, okay? And plus u dot grad omega, okay? Now, Term number three, we have curl of one over rho grad b. So term number three, we have the curl of one over rho grad p. And we're gonna distribute this just the same way we distribute derivatives, the derivative of a times b, um, a prime b plus b prime a. So that's what we're gonna do here. The curl of one over rho grad p is um, one over rho, it's, a b prime, so one over rho curl grad p plus, so um, a b prime plus a prime b plus grad one over rho cross grad p. Okay? And that is gonna give us the following. Now this guy is zero by virtue curl grad is zero, right? So that's zero plus, now what is grad one over rho? Same thing with the derivative. Um, the derivative of u over v, u prime v plus u prime v minus v prime u over v squared. And so that gives us, so u prime is zero minus v prime u, so that gives us minus grad rho over rho squared cross grad p, or minus one over rho grad rho cross grad p. This is going to be a very important term. For the viscous term, we have the curl of 1 over rho div tau. We're going to leave that term untouched um, because that just, that's just going to describe um, uh, the diffusion of vorticity. Uh, so when, in, in certain cases, when we can distribute um, the curl inside, um, such as when we go to the constant density case, um, then we're going to see that this is going to describe the diffusion of vorticity. And finally, for the body forces, curl B, if B is a conservative force such as gravity, then, then curl B is zero, okay? Only if that's the case, okay? So now we can plug those terms back in and then we're gonna discuss uh, what they mean. So we go back to the vorticity transport equation. We have d omega by dt for the transient term. Now for the advection term, I'm gonna move um, this guy, um, I'm gonna keep this guy on the left-hand side. So plus u dot grad omega, because I'm trying to write this in a material derivative form, okay? 
and I'm gonna move these two guys to the right hand side. So we get omega dot grad dot grad u minus omega times div u. Verify that all of these quantities are vector quantities. And then um, we have for um, the pressure term, so we have a minus, minus curl one over rho grad p, so times a minus sign, we get a, we get a positive sign, plus one over rho squared, grad rho cross grad p. And for the diffusion term, we have plus the cross product of one over rho div tau, plus curl b. This is a formidable equation. That's called the vorticity transport equation, right here. Vorticity transport equation, okay? Now, oftentimes, we can write this guy or we write this guy as simply d omega by dt. Okay, so the meanings of different terms, this is the unsteady term, unsteady term. Um, both of them, or just individually, this would be a local accumulation term plus an advection term, or for a material point moving for, with the fluid, this measures the vorticity, the rate of change of vorticity for that material element. Now, these two terms are both vortex stretching, what we call vortex stretching terms. They account for the stretching of vorticity or the thinning of vortex structures in a fluid. And so if you had um, some uh, a, a vortex structure like this, then um, these guys are responsible for thinning that out and for increasing the vorticity in um, this vortex structure, okay? They can act this way. And due to the conservation of angular momentum, vorticity is going to increase as you move from this situation to that situation to conserve angular momentum because the diameter or the radius of this um, um, vortex um, tube is, is thinning. Now, specifically, um, these, uh, this term is a three-dimensional, um, has a three-dimensional uh, um, nature. This is present in 3D only and would show once, once you go in 2D, um, this would be identically zero. Um, and this is, a, uh, this is 3D stretching, stretching, and a stretching due to velocity gradients. Okay, due to the presence of grad u. Now, this term over here is simply due to compressibility or dilatation effects due to div u. But both of them contribute to what we call stretching. Now, this term is a source term as well and is a very interesting term. This is called the baroclinic, baroclinic um, term. And it gives rise to vorticity um, forces fluids to mix, in other words, when there are density and pressure gradients. So this often happens when two fluids with different densities and temperatures, they mix with, with each other. And if grad rho and grad p um, are, are parallel, then there is no baroclinic effect. However, if density is changing in one direction, okay, increasing or decreasing in one direction, and P is changing in another direction, then this term is going to create um, vorticity. Okay, so let's say these are row lines and P lines, so this term is going to cr create um, a vorticity. And this is what happens um, in certain types of um, situations with hurricanes, where you have fluids of different temp at different temperatures and therefore different densities and pressures um, mixing with each other. This is a diffusion term diffusion of vorticity for incompressible flows compressible flows a constant density incompressible flows this term reduces simply to del squared omega new del squared omega okay and hence the nomenclature of diffusion of vorticity 
and simply this is the contribution of body forces body forces um, if they're non-conservative um, then you're going to get um, vortex generation and um, as a source term in your vorticity transport equation.